everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about broken access control, and we're going to use the DVWA to demonstrate how that works. In this case, we're going to use the file inclusion portion within the DVWA. So let's go ahead and get started and figure out exactly what we're talking about here. So just as a reminder, we're only going to be covering the lows and the medium challenge on this one. If you're interested in the solution for the high and walking through that, go check out the Pentest Professional course over at Pentest TV where we cover all of that information. All right, so if we take a look at the file inclusion, we can see that there is a question mark page equal. So basically the website is pulling a page specifically for whatever we're linking on. So if we hit the file1.php, we can see that it changes to file1.php. All right, so that's gonna be our attack vector. So let's take a look at, at the OWASP top 10 and dig in a little bit about the access controls. Okay, so we're on the website for the OWASP top 10 where it talks about the different top 10s uh, when it comes to web vulnerabilities. And we see that the very top is A01 broken access control. So that one actually elevated to the top most common type of exploit on a web application system. All right, so if we take a look at broken access control, we'll scroll down a little bit and we will see that a list of map CWEs, we've got path traversal, right? So we're gonna explore that in greater detail to see how we can exploit that. So here's a page uh, that OWASP has dedicated specifically to path traversal, and it kind of explains basically what's happening, is that the system is allowed to query uh, files that are on the system that aren't specifically located in that web file directory. So if we scroll on down, we can see that there is some examples. So if we look here, we can see that very similar, instead of page, we have file. And then basically what we're doing is we're looking for the ability to add some additional sub directories to our query. So in this case, we see the dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. So let's go ahead and use that and see if we can gain access to sensitive information. So up at the top at the URL, I'm going to change the uh, actual value here. So I'm going to do dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. I'll just add a bunch of these. And then I'll enter Etsy password, which is a common file that we're interested in just to see who's on the system, basically user accounts. So let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. Okay, we can see at the very top here that there was a dump of information and this is actually the the uh, Etsy password file. All right, so this demonstrated that we can manipulate the URL to include, in this case, requests to go back to a directory at a higher level and then gain access to information in this case, the slash Etsy directory, specifically the password file. So I'm gonna to go to DVWA security. I'm gonna change it to medium and I will submit. And then I'll go back to the file inclusion. All right, so we're gonna try the exact same thing we did before. We're gonna do the dot dot slash and see if we can get to the Etsy password file. So let's go back up here. We'll just start here, right? Just like we did before, so dot 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 slash, we'll go there and we'll hit enter and we don't see anything. So somehow they're filtering our input. Um, so usually what happens is they strip the dot dot slashes so that they, they're known bad characters. And so the web designer is thinking ahead and trying to prevent some sort of directory traversal attack. All right, so let's go back and look at one more time and see if there's any suggestions to circumvent this as well. So if we go back up to our description, there's ways to encode the dot dot slash. And we can see here that uh, there's some code right here that we're gonna just copy. So that actually represents dot dot slash. So let's go back and see if we can replace the dot dot slash with this character set. So we'll go back to our URL. Four, five, six, I put it in there six times. I'll go slash Etsy slash password and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it did a dump. So we were able to circumvent it. Apparently it was filtering on the dot dot slash. Let's actually take a look at the code to see if it gives us any information about what they were actually doing and how we were able to circumvent that under the medium challenge. Okay, so here's the source file for the script within the web server 
that specifically filters out any sort of modification. So for example, we here we see here that if we put in HTTP, it'll replace it with HTTPS, right? And in this case, we have a dot dot slash, it replaces with it a dot dot backslash, which basically makes our query inert. It doesn't work at all. So those aren't valid characters for the, in this case, probably a Linux system. And so it's not going to recognize that as a request to directory traversal back. All right, so in this case, it stopped us, but again, it just filtered on the dot dot slash, which we were able to circumvent by encoding the dot dot slash into a different character string. So I want to take us to the testing guide that OWASP puts out specifically for traversal, directory traversal. And if we scroll down, we can see basically it explains what we're trying to do here. In this case, it mimics exactly what we were looking at, the slash etsy, the slash etsy slash password file. And it gives us some examples on how to perform that. So again, we see the dot dot slash dot dot slash and specifically in this case, it's item instead of file. So one last website I want to take you to is Portswigger. They have an academy that describes a lot of the different attacks that we're going through here on the DVWA. And the reason why I'm taking you to this website is because it shows you how to prevent a path traversal attack, uh, specifically by using some additional code within the, uh, in this case, Java code. But there are other ways to validate whether or not the information that is being input is correct or not, or attempting to perform a directory traversal. If we take a look at OWASP top 10, it also has a list of how to prevent these types of attacks. And uh, we can see that uh, there's a short list, but at a very high level. And uh, one of the big ones is being able to disable web server directory listing. And for those that are unfamiliar, we also have a pentest.tv website, and it has some courses including both free and premium. I want to show you specifically that there is a professional penetration testing course for free. I would encourage you to go over, check it out, and it, it like I said, it is free. It's got a lot of great material. And I think you'll find it very helpful. So that's it for broken access control in the OWASP top 10. If you have any questions, make sure you join us on the Discord server. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.